Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNonPhoto.com and in today's short video, we're going to be a, well, a bit manic then, didn't I? Getting very excited in this video. We're going to be looking at how you can set up your EOS 600D or Rebel T3i um, to take manual video, but still give you great exposures and make it incredibly simple. Now, you may well be thinking, well, Rob, you know, why do I need to do manual video? Why do I need manual settings? Well, the reason is, is because one of the reasons why we buy things like uh, a Canon 600D to do video, or we use our T3i 600D to take video, is because of the fantastic quality it produces, 1080p. Um, but you know, our mobile phones can probably record at 1080p, but what our mobile phones can't do and what dedicated video recorders can't do is use these wonderful lenses that are on the front of our camera. So it could be you've got something like I've got, we've got the 18 to 55 kit here, um, f3.5 to 5.6, is it or something? Yeah, so, you know, it's not the fastest lens in the world, but you may well have invested in something like the 40mm 2.8 pancake lens. Fantastic little lens, this one. Super sharp, super small. And it is actually my new favorite lens for recording videos or on. And you may well have invested in the Nifty 50, the Canon, um, let's take it off, F 1.8 50mm lens. Superb lens. Um, and what these lenses can give you is incredibly narrow depth of field, which gives you that cinematic look, gives you the look where just you're in focus and everything else is, is blurred. Now, this video you're looking at now is actually being recorded with my Logitech uh, C920 HD webcam, which is a very high quality webcam, produces pretty good pretty good video recording at 720p because it has a little bit of a problem at 1080 the frame rate goes down quite a lot but at 720p it looks very nice hopefully this looks very nice if you're watching it at the higher quality settings on youtube but it can't give you that really small depth of field because if you look behind me at these cameras there's a um, olympus um, stylus i think or a Mew, Mew 2 i think it's behind me and then there's an ensign box camera down there as well they're pretty much although they're a little bit blurred you can actually see them whereas if you were shooting with the f1.8 or the Pancake 40mm f2.8, you wouldn't be able to see them, they would be blurred. However, when we first start using the movie mode in our 600D or a T3i, or any of the other uh, Canon DSLRs, or the Nikon ones, come, come to think of it, um, we'll have auto exposure on. And what that means is the camera is deciding on the um, shutter speed that it's gonna use, and it's deciding on the aperture it's gonna use, um, and the ISO it's going to use. And so even though we might have our beautiful f1.8 uh, 50mm, or as I say, my new favourite lens for recording video, the 40mm 2.8, the camera might be shooting at f8 or f5.6. So at those higher apertures, the depth of field is, is bigger. So we're not getting that look um, we really want. So it's important that we can use manual controls when uh, shooting video, just like we would if we were shooting uh, stills to have full artistic control over what we're doing but also you know one of the reasons why we use this as I said before is to get very small depth of field so we want to say to our cameras look I want you to shoot at f2 when I'm using my 50 1.8 or you know or even I might want you to shoot at f1.8 when I'm shooting with my 40mm 2.8 you know I want the video to be at f2.8 because when I'm doing a head uh, a talking head video like this pretty much I don't move that much my arms move around a bit but my head's pretty much staying whoops, in the same focal plane all the time. And so I can set up my uh, camera on a tripod. I focus it on a light stand, actually, that I sit here. And so I can get a pretty small depth of field. Um, and it also means that by forcing the lens to be at f2.8, to be at the maximum aperture, we're letting the maximum amount of light in so the ISO can go lower. So there we go. So it's not difficult. It's very, very easy to do. Um, all you need to do is grab your uh, 600D or your Rebel T3i, you know, turn it on, flip out the lens, flip out the cover, however you like to do it. Um, and then just set the dial to 
uh, the movie mode, the little camera, d does it a bit, I'll tell you what, annoys me a little bit about the 600D, the T3i, that I shoot in aperture priority mode almost all the time. But when I want to shoot in movie mode, you've got to go all the way around, haven't you, on the, on the, on the, on the dial. Anyway, put it into movie mode. And then the next thing you want to do is you just want to press the menu button on the top left hand side and then make sure you're in the far left hand side of the settings because we want the one with it's um, it's red and there's a little picture of a camera and a movie camera and then the top option should be movie exposure um, and it's probably set to auto at the moment but just set, select that with the set button Use the down button to go into manual and set it to that. So there we go. So now we're in manual mode. We now have control over the uh, aperture, the shutter speed, and the um, uh, ISO of the camera. So now what we want to do is we now we want to go into the menu. So we now press the Q button on the back of the camera, the quick menu button, and we just want to go down. So it should say AF Live at the top, maybe if that's what you like using, that's what I like using. And then we go down to Auto White Balance. I think it handles white balance pretty well. Um, standard Scene Position. Uh, Auto-correct image, blah de blah, blah, shooting in RAW. Now, what you want to be shooting in is 1920, so not, you know, um, we're shooting at 1080p, 24 frames a second. Now, 24 frames a second is kind of like a cinematic standard, so if you stick to 24 frames a second, that would be good. So to choose it, you can just press set and make sure it's on 1920 at 24 frames a second. So we're kind of, we're almost good to go now. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to choose our aperture and our shutter speed. Now, in fact, let me change this lens. So I've got the uh, 40mm f 2.8 on it. There we go. There's the 40mm f 2.8. Because I want this, when I'm doing these uh, headshot type videos, these talking heads, I want this to be at f 2.8. So I get that narrow depth of field look. So all I do is I just go and look down at the bottom and you'll see at the bottom of the screen, you'll far left corner, you'll, you'll see your shutter speed. I'm not sure what that would be, but then you'll see your aperture. And all you want to do is just press and hold the AV button and just roll that to get to the aperture you want. You know, whatever that the widest thing is in your lens, if that's what you want. I mean, if you want a larger depth of field, go to a higher aperture. So we're gonna go f2.8. And now the next thing is the shutter speed. Now, there's a very simple rule when it comes to choosing your shutter speed. In order to get um, good looking video, all you have to do is your shutter speed is twice the rate, your frame rate that you selected before in the quick menu. So we're shooting at 24 frames a second. So our shutter speed is a 50th of a second. So all you do to change that is you just roll your command dial at the top and get it to a 50th. So for example, on my camera now, it says I'm gonna be shooting at 50th of a second, F2.8. Now, this is the magic bit. This is the bit that makes manual mode so easy on cameras like the 600D T3i. Auto ISO, okay. So all you have to do, you press the ISO button on top of the camera and you make sure it's set to auto. And what that now means is, is that we've chosen our aperture to give us a large aperture to get a short depth of field. We've chosen our shutter speed so that we get that nice cinematic look. Um, and what we've done is because this camera has auto ISO, it's gonna look after the exposure for us. It is gonna change the, the uh, ISO level. In other words, it's gonna change the camera's sensitivity to light to match the lighting situations that are around us. Um, and, and that is absolutely fantastic. So we don't have to worry about it. And if you, I mean, if you haven't already, that's another good reason to shoot in manual when you're shooting stills, because you can set auto ISO. That gives you all the artistic control of aperture and shutter speed, and the camera will look after you, because it's gonna change that third part of the exposure triangle. It's gonna change the ISO to look after you to get an acceptable exposure. And there we go, how simple is that? That will then give you beautiful video with a nice wide depth of fit, what, sorry, nice narrow depth of field because we're going to be shooting f2.8 on this lens or it might have been f1.8 on the nifty 50 and we're going to get the look we're looking for we're going to get that nice looking video because we're shooting at 50 frames a second and it's going to look, look after us with the auto iso now that's fine for inside however there's a caveat to this there's a catch and the catch is that if you're shooting outside 
in bright conditions, you may well find that even at ISO 100, so when the camera takes the ISO all the way down, you can't shoot f2.8 at a 50th of a second because quite simply it's letting too much light in. So what will happen in that situation is the camera will reduce the ISO as much as it can, but then it will say, hey, look, I can't do any more. And so your video will become overexposed. So that's why it's important to look at it on the back and see what it looks like. In those situations, you've got really two choices. Tighten up your aperture, which is going to expand your depth of field. If you don't want to do that because you really still want to keep that depth of field very, very small because you, maybe you're shooting, I don't know, say a portrait type talking head situation, move your subject into the shade so there's less light so you can open up the aperture or you're going to have to buy and then fit ND filters, neutral density filters that are glass filters that go on the front of the camera that um, block out some of the light. Now I'm not going to really go into that, that in this video because I'm really just talking about how you can use um, uh, the manual video settings when you're doing sort of YouTube videos um, like this or maybe you're doing instruction videos like this or you're inside where in fact you've really got the opposite problem with the uh, ISO in the fact that the ISO is probably maybe even going up too high up at 3200 or 1600 and so you know you want that wide aperture to let more light in so the quality isn't good but I've got to say that you know I've taken video taken at ISO 1600 and I think it looks fantastic out of the 600D it looks absolutely magical. So there we go hopefully that encourages you to shoot with uh, manual settings in video because it really is the best way to get that cinematic look at home when you're doing sort of YouTube videos or any sort of video like this where you can take your 50mm 1.8 you can take your 40mm 2.8 hell you can even take your, your kit lens and make sure that the camera is shooting at its widest aperture to get that nice narrow depth of field. But again, watch your focus because your depth of field is narrow. So if you're moving backwards and forwards a lot, you know, you are going to go out of focus unless you've got someone to help you there. So there we go. Um, remember, if you've got any questions, email me, scalespeeder at gmail.com. Go and visit robinandphoto.com. If you like these videos, please subscribe. It really helps. And um, thanks for watching. Wait a minute, I've got something else to add as well. This is my 400th video on YouTube. Um, so I've kind of got to thank everybody for putting up with me for the past, I think I started in 2007. Gosh, was that seven years ago? Um, I've been recording and putting stuff up on YouTube. I just started up just as, on a whim. If you go back to some of my first videos, well, probably 99% of my videos, actually, the quality is pretty dreadful. Um, I used to um, upload pictures of remote control cars, satellite navigation things, and then as I sort of um, the photography really kicked into gear, you know, as, as a, you know, I'm just a kind of a, an, a hobbyist, I'm just an amateur. Lots of uh, gadgets and photography stuff came up. So um, thank you very much, everybody, for watching my videos. Thank you for liking them. Thank you for sharing them. Thank you for subscribing. Um, if you watch. Um, Sorry, if you listen to the SEL Photography Podcast, thanks for doing that. Thanks for supporting me. And uh, I, thanks for putting up with me for the past 399 videos. <laughs> um, here's to the next 400 videos, hey. And uh, hopefully it won't take another seven years to do those. So my name's Rob from robnonphoto.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>